Good morning doctors welcome again today we are going to discuss about gastroenterology mcqs a 40 year old man present to the a and e department after a heavy night of drinking it is difficult to get much history from him as he is under influence of alcohol he vomits bowel contains the fresh blood on clinical examination blood pressure is 98 by 58 heart rate is 100 slightly calmy but otherwise unremarkable his friend who comes with him does not know much about the patient's past medical history but says he has been retching and vomiting significantly prior to presenting to the emergency department what is the most appropriate step here he requires upper gi endoscopy after resuscitation and high dose proton pump inhibitors okay so this is the explanation guys let's discuss little bit the most likely diagnosis in this patient is mallory vestier after repeated vomiting however we do not know much about this patient medical history and he could well have been a heavy alcohol drinker for year and have cirrhosis and esophageal varices which are now bleeding the other differential is that he has a stomach or duodenal ulcer that is bleeding okay now a 50 year old man has scleroderma and is managed with a number of medications including amlodipine for renaud's phenomenon and omeprazole for reflux presumed to be related to esophageal dysmotility although her symptoms have been well controlled for many months for the past 4 6 weeks she has began to suffer from increasing abdominal bloating with mild tenderness and worsening nausea on examination there is obvious peripheral calcinosis and mild abdominal distension hematology and biochemistry investigations are normal but the barium swallow confirms severe esophageal dysmotility a hydrogen breath test is positive which of the following is the most appropriate treatment the most appropriate treatment here is metronidazole okay now a 46 year old man who has have a weak epigastric pain which radiates his back worsening over the past few months present to the clinic new symptoms of jaundice he also has itching and passing dark urine on examination he looks blood pressure 134 by 72 pulse is 74 regular he has epigastric tenderness and palpation of his abdomen investigation hemoglobin 10.4 wcc white cell count 8.3 platelets 191 serum sodium 136 potassium 4.2 creatinine 112 alkaline phosphatase is 292 bilirubin is 210 whereas alkaline trans phase amino that is 83 ultrasound abdomen mass head of pancreas abdomen mass in head of pancreas which of the following is the most appropriate initial chemotherapy the tumor is inoperable so here is answer is gemcitabine okay okay let's discuss metronidazole bacterial overgrowth syndrome occur either there is abnormal gut anatomy such as post abdominal surgery or uh, where there is a gut dysmotility for instance due to systemic sclerosis patient complains symptoms of abdominal bloating nausea indigestion or intermittent diarrhea metronidazole is a initial treatment of choice although antibiotics may acutely be rotated over a period of few months in this scenario the recent change in symptoms on a background of stable symptoms control imply that the new symptoms are due to bacterial overgrowth okay gemcitabine nice guidance suggests that the gemcitabine should be the first line palliative therapy where pancreatic carcinoma is associated with reasonable function status combinations with capsitabine platinum uh, based agents may be associated with prolongation of survival okay now 
A 60-year-old diabetic patient complains of frequent vomiting and weight loss. His symptoms started about three months ago. He denies any dysphagia or acid reflux type symptoms, but does get bloating and early stity on clinical examination there is no lymphadenopathy but you note that his vision is poor and that he has peripheral neuropathy which of the following is most likely to provide you the diagnosis in this condition the barium meal is a best okay this is a case of gastroparesis regarding risk for gastric cancer which one of the following statement is not true Type O blood group is associated with a small risk of gastric cancer. Sorry guys, type A is responsible for increased risk of gastric cancer, not O. So they are asking not true. So O, this is right answer. A 19 year old man who is normally fit and well has had bloody diarrhea for the past four days. He has been doing work experience at a daycare center for children as a part of his university. Nursery nursing course apparently some children within the center have also been ill with diarrhea on examination blood pressure is 110 by 70 with postural drop 20 mmg he looks dehydrated and there is diffuse pain on abdomen palpation blood test reveal mild hypokalemia with a potassium 3 and elevated creatinine in which of the following is most likely diagnosis this is a case of shigella shigella Shigella. Okay. Now, 60 year old diabetic patient complains of frequent vomiting and weight loss. His symptoms started about three months ago. He denies dysphagia reflux. We already discussed this. Barium meal, the patient suffering from gastroparesis, generally in diabetes, it takes 10 years of poorly controlled diabetes before symptoms develop. It is due to autonomic neuropathy. Other causes are gastroparesis include Parkinson disease, scleroderma, medications such as opiates. A barium meal is most likely to show delayed gastric emptying from the list provided x-ray are taken at various times showing delayed gastric emptying is still better but uh, not provide as a option here is a gastric emptying studies using radioactive isotopes none of the other option provide here will give a suggestion of delayed gastric emptying which is required for diagnosis of gastroparesis ogd uh, may show food in the stomach despite several hours of fasting giving suggestion of gastroparesis but barium meal is far superior okay uh, type O blood group is not associated with small risk of gastric cancer epidemiological studies have shown an increased prevalence of blood type A patient okay now shigellosis cause dysentery type picture uh, with severe uh, bloody diarrhea with mucus. It is highly infectious and outbreaks are relatively common in children daycare center. Guardiasis tends to result in an irritable bowel type picture with diarrhea, abdominal bloating and increased bowel gas. Whereas staph aureus food poisoning is associated with toxin ingested can lead to vomiting a few hours after it is eaten. Okay. Salmonella and Campylobacters are associated with diarrhea and vomiting and occur mostly after ingestion of contaminated uh, meat or dairy products. So hope guys it's clear for you till here. Okay. A 63 year old man presented with short history of two weeks of abdominal pain, swelling, nausea and vomiting. On examination he has pleothoric and head ascites and mild tender hepatomegaly. Initial investigation revealed hemoglobin 19.2 but other results are not yet available. What condition would we suspect? This is a case of Burcherry syndrome. This is a case of Burcherry syndrome. Okay. Now. A 46 year old female with a non celiac disease has a series of blood tests performed as a part of routine outpatient appointment which one of the following laboratory finding not consistent with her clinical history normal range are given in square brackets. So the calcium 2.98 is not associated with this celiac disease okay. A 53 year old man present with hematemesis and on examination is found to have ankle swelling, ascites and splenomegaly. 
he does not drink or smoke and there is no family history of liver disease his mother died of bronchial carcinoma and his father of respiratory failure secondary to emphysema he was smoker what further blood test would have to elucidate the cause of his liver pathology that is alpha 1 antitrypsin levels okay let's discuss but cherry syndrome is a type of venous outflow obstruction caused by occlusion of hepatic veins the liver become engorged resulting in portal hypertension in the sides the stretching of liver capsule giving the tender hepatomegaly no cause may be found in 50% of patient but it may be due to compression of hepatic veins by tumor or thrombosis due to hypercoagulability state secondary and polycythemia or the oral contraceptive pill okay now celiac disease associated with electrolytes deficiencies and malabsorption leading to hypokalemia hypocalcemia hypomagnesemia hypoalbuminemia hypoproteinemia and hypocholesteremia may be present that's why hyperkalemia is not a feature of celiac disease alpha 1 antitrypsin level a deficiency of alpha 1 antitrypsin may be associated with liver disease and emphysema the deficiency is inherited and autosomal dominant and the enzyme inhibits neutrophil elastase a proteolytic enzyme capable of destroying alveolar wall connective tissue such deficiencies may progress or cirrhosis in 10-15% of patients about 2% of patient with emphysema have enzyme deficiency okay now a 51 year old man present with arthritis foul smelling diarrhea abdominal pain and weight loss 15 kg over 2 years a previous barium meal and follow through and a colonoscopy showed no significant abnormality urinary 5 hiaa was normal on examination he was cachexic there was no abdominal swelling but he had a pyrexia 37.8 degree celsius hemoglobin was 10.5 serum ferritin 20 albumin 20 routine urine analysis was negative what is likely cause of his illness so here is the cause we pulse disease we pulse disease let's discuss This is a rare condition caused by Actinobacterium trioparema vipli may affect any organ but most commonly affects the gastrointestinal symptoms system with consequent malaise weight loss diarrhea and arthralgia the arthritis is migratory predominantly affecting the peripheral joints Seasonal biopsy with the characteristic histological picture is the earliest way to make diagnosis. Treatment with antibodies is recommended although treatment may need to be continued for a year. So guys I hope till here it's very much clear for you if you have any queries any question you can ask me and if you new on my channel please subscribe it thank you good day goodbye that's all for today